Sergeant Show. And now three fights in the book, main event still to come. We're at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, and now just moments away from the highly anticipated showdown between the world's top two junior welterweights. There's a look at Terrence Crawford, the pride of Omaha, Nebraska, and one of, if not the brightest light in American boxing at this moment. Crawford formerly held the title at 135, and now after only three fights in the division, sits atop the heap of 140 pounders. Meanwhile, there's Victor Postol. His 28-0 record is identical to Crawford's, and his emergence at the top of the division feels even more sudden than Crawford's, powered by spectacular knockout wins over former title holder Seljic Iveen and the highly regarded Lucas Matisse. Not coincidentally, both of those post-all wins took place under the guidance of relatively newly hired trainer Freddie Roach. And before we get to Crawford versus post-all, a quick look at an upcoming boxing-related theatrical release. We are in for a serious fight. The new golden era for boxing begins with Roberto Duran. Sugar Ray Lennon. I don't lose. He needs to come back. You know how it is to be hungry? Duran should fight no one but me. I will beat him. Is that a real fighter or a clown? Hands of Stone. In theaters everywhere, August 26th. Terrence Crawford, first on the scale. Victor Postal, next on the scale. Postal is a little bit taller. A little bit longer than Crawford. Crawford was 140 on the nose, and Postal a half pound under at 139 and a half. And there's Victor Postal as he prepares in the dressing room for his entrance to the ring. The gloves are on, as you can see. He has a very calm presence about him. In the fights in which he succeeded, the knockouts of Ideen and Matisse, he took a little while early on to get rolling, weathered a couple of storms early on, then got his jab under control, got his rhythm going, and knocked those guys out. A lot of people think he cannot possibly do that to Terrence Crawford, who's shown tremendous talent and adaptability, who has shown an ability to box and an ability to punch. Most of all, he's a natural fighter. He fights from the inside out. His heart and soul are into every fight and he has been able to improvise on the fly against good fighters, changing the rhythms of the fights to his advantage. Another look outside. On a beautiful night in Las Vegas. And we get ready for these two Unbeaten 140 pounders to enter the ring. So, Roy Jones, let's get started talking about the fight. Uh, Crawford, one of his most important identity markers in the ring is that he's equally comfortable fighting a, either conventional, which is his natural stance, or southpaw, where he's been knocking guys out because of his shocking power from the southpaw side. So how difficult is it for Postal to prepare for a fighter like Crawford? It's very difficult for Postal to prepare because you don't know whether you should prepare yourself for the right-handed version or the left-handed version. Either way it goes, though, for Postal, it's possible that the left-handed version could be a kink in Crawford's armor because a southpaw is usually open for a straight right hand from a conventional fighter. Being that he's the taller fighter, Postal, that will give him a great opportunity to land that straight right hand. And that's the best punch, or would be the key punch, and the best chance that I think Postal has for winning this fight. Max Kellerman, one way most writers tend to describe this matchup is that it's the traditional European style of Victor Postal, stand up, technique is the, the hallmark of this, fight behind the jab, and the American urban style of Terrence Crawford, who can either box or fight or slug, and can change the fight on the fly as he sees fit. So what does history tell us about that particular matchup? Well, the thing about Crawford that makes him more than just a good fighter or a slick fighter or a determined fighter or a skillful fighter is that he loves to fight. It's rare when you have a guy as skillful as Crawford and at this point as accomplished who can play defense the way he can when he chooses, 
who is so exquisitely skilled, as you and Roy have mentioned, with an overall boxing game inside and out, upstairs and down. It's rare when that guy also loves to fight, and Crawford loves to fight. And that's one of the reasons I believe he's favored here tonight by too wide a margin over a very technically sound, tall, and increasingly hard-punching Victor Postal. So the last preliminary fight ended early, a two-round knockout for Oscar Valdez. We're told that the main event fighters will be walking to the ring in about 15 minutes. Until that time, we'll continue to build the drama for you guys. Let's all three of us together now take a look at Terrence Crawford's most recent fight, which took place earlier this year against Hank Lundy in the small room at Madison Square Garden. And one of the things that this shows, which we've seen in several Crawford fights, is that he starts a little bit slowly, tries to get a look at the opponent, and if the opponent's going to be aggressive, as Lundy was, Crawford might get hit a little bit in the first round. And he can't do that tonight, Jim, because the fighter in front of him is taller, and he's a little bit better puncher than uh, Lundy was. So we've got to look forward to him starting a little quicker tonight than he did against Lundy. All right, I'm told this is a sound-up piece, so let's lay out. For a guy as skillful as Crawford, he likes to fight. And Lundy, it seems, wants to bring that out in him early in the fight to give himself better chances. We know Crawford starts slow, he analyzes his opponent, and then he starts to break them down. Another left hand landing for Lundy. Crawford came back with a one-two of his own. Kind of flicking that jab, kind of make it a little bit stiffer and see, okay? Got, so you got pushing back. Big left hand and another left hand. Momentarily wobbles Lundy. Crawford looking for a way to land another shot. Down goes Hank Lundy on a Crawford left hand. Boxing ability and the IQ that I have, and that's going to take me a long way in this boxing game. Well, that's a repeating script. He switches southpaw, he hurts the opponent, he winds up knocking him out. Lundy, by the way, is the only common opponent for both Postal and Crawford. He traveled to Ukraine a couple of years ago and lost a decision to Postal. That was Postal's first big positive experience against an American fighter. This week, Hank Lundy said, Roy Jones, that Crawford cannot observe his occasional habit of standing and looking and trying to get a fix on Postal in the first couple of rounds. That might allow Postal to develop momentum behind his jab. He thinks Crawford needs to attack him. Does that sound right to you? Yeah, that sounds very right to me because Crawford is not taller than uh, Postal like he was against Lundy. Therefore, Postal, if he can come out and use that jab, and that right hand is probably his most dangerous weapon. So if he can use his jab, keep Crawford at a distance, avoid all of Crawford's sharp punches early, he is also a late bloomer. We know that from watching post off pass. So if he can get into the later part of the fight and not be hurt by Crawford's power, then he could be a big issue for Crawford down the line. All right, to Max Kellerman, when we first saw Crawford at 135 pounds, we had him sort of typed as a boxer. He's moved up to 140. He said to you after the Lundy fight, I'm a much bigger puncher at 140. He is getting knockouts. How big a puncher is he? He is not only a big puncher, but he's a finisher. He likes to hurt the other guy. And in terms of your question to Roy, what does it mean if he starts slowly against probably the best professional opponent he's faced, who also has a height advantage and who's on a real roll? I'm not so sure it spells doom for Crawford or really puts him up against it. What we've seen in every fight that Crawford's had, even when he's had what looks like a little rough going in the first two or three rounds, is he studies his opponents, and it's not just that he has so many tools available to him. He has all the tools in the toolbox, but you heard Crawford say he has a very high boxing IQ. He knows which tools to reach for, for which job, and so far in his professional career, he's always chosen the right ones and taken his opponent apart. Even if he falls down early, I think Terrence Crawford, it's kind of hard to judge where he is until after the first three or four rounds. And about a year ago, it appeared that if Crawford was going to wind up with a signature fight at 140, it would probably be against Lucas Matisse. But Victor Postol rewrote the script when he shockingly upset Matisse last fall. In fact, 
He wound up knocking Matisse out, which was quite unexpected. Let's go back and take a look at how that happened. It never fails. High drama at the Stub Hub Center in Carson. Boxing capital of the West Coast, Lucas Matisse. Victor Postal. Conventional wisdom is that Matisse will come in and Postal fight at a distance. But Postal said there are times where he wants to be the aggressor in this fight. Right hand lands for Matisse. Crowd comes to life. Good body shot by Postal. Hard right hand by Matisse. His best punch in the fight. Postol trying to reassert himself. Big right hand for Matisse. Postol was wobbled by that. Postol showing a pretty good beard here in the seventh round. He's been hit by some big Matisse shots. Hard right hand. Postol momentarily had Matisse in trouble with the one-two. This is amazing here in the eighth round as Victor Postol, the boxer, is putting Matisse on the defensive. Postol looks very commanding in there. He's hitting Matisse at will. What happened there? You think he can get the knockout here? I think we can. He's getting a little tired. He's not trying so hard anymore. I think we can knock him out, yes. Oh, oh. oh, that is a knockdown. We've got a count. And Matisse is down. This is over. Victor Posto has knocked out Lucas Matisse. What a phenomenal performance by Victor Posto. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Back live at ringside in Vegas, Roy Victor Postol fighting in the Ukraine had 10 knockouts in his first 25 fights. He comes here to the United States, parts fighting with Freddie Roach, and now two knockouts in the last three fights, including that knockout of Postol. What has prompted the change in his profile as a fighter? Well, Jim, that's kind of simple. Right now, today, Wild Card Jim is the modern day crunk Jim. To survive in the crunk Jim, you had to be able to punch take a punch and not get hit by a punch. Sounds kind of hard to do, but you see so much talent in that wild card gym, like you saw in the crunk gym, that if you can't keep guys off of you, make guys respect your power, make them put some respect on your name, then you can't survive. It's just that simple. All right, after the big knockout over Matisse and getting ready for this fight, Postol had an interesting quote this week, Max. He said, well, I think Matisse is actually a better fighter than Crawford. I've already beaten a better guy than Terrence Crawford. I don't. Yeah, I don't think anybody else agrees with that. No. Is it gamesmanship? No. Yeah, I'm sure it's, as uh, you know, others have pointed out, that Freddie Roach is helping with his psychology. And Freddie Roach has a great way of getting his fighters to develop a taste for blood. Fighters like Postal, for example, were good fighters, but not really stopping their opponents. Suddenly, Freddie shows them how to do it. He encourages them to do it, and they start feeling themselves. Them, themselves. They start liking to do it. Freddie told me earlier today that one of the advantages he thinks Postal has in this fight is that he throws his punches straight up the middle, and Crawford comes in more roundhouse. And of course, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. That's how Postal throws them. That's why Freddie believes tactically he'll win the fight. Crawford's been getting there first against some pretty good opponents with those roundhouse punches. We'll see what happens tonight. Well, as much as Roy and Max and I would love to stand here and talk boxing all night, the fighters want to come to the ring. Let's get ready for the main event. Terrence Crawford versus Victor Postol is being brought to you by MGM Grand, live from Las Vegas. Cerveza Tecate, Born Bowl, and by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. gentlemen at this time we will have the national anthems for the two champions in the ring please welcome the color guard from Nellis Air Force Base representing all the men and women now serving in harm's way in the armed forces of the United States of America and now ladies and gentlemen here to sing the Ukrainian national anthem please welcome recording artist Mika Newton Shit, 
ця доля зінуть наші вороженьки, як роса на сонці, і запанує ними браття у свої сторонці. За нашу свободу І покажем, що ми Праця козацького Раду And now, ladies and gentlemen, here to sing the national anthem of the United States of America, a young lady who won over 30 million fans online with her performance at the Lincoln Memorial. Please welcome Star Swain. Oh, say can you see me by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled So now it's time for our main event, Terrence Crawford against Victor Postol with their 140-pound title belts on the line. Crawford's rising star keeps growing and growing, as does Crawford himself, who previously held a 135-pound title belt and who seems destined to make his way ultimately to the talent-laden 147-pound division before too long. And there's Victor Postol, widely considered along with Crawford, one of the top two fighters in the 140-pound division. Postal's been on an impressive run since hiring trainer Freddie Roach three fights ago. Both he and Crawford deserve praise for correctly identifying the biggest challenge in the division and running toward it. Tonight, two men born a world apart converge in a square ring. Each undefeated. Each with a claim as the world's top 140-pound fighter. Each of the belief that risk is a small price to pay for greatness. From humble beginnings, Terrence Bud Crawford has risen to boxing's pinnacle. The Omaha Phenom has demolished opponent after opponent, while capturing title belts in two weight classes and steadily climbing the pound-for-pound -pound ladder. Tremendous shot! Down goes Gamboa! Until now, Crawford's craft and power have appeared unrivaled, but every truly great fighter needs a great opponent. Enter Ukrainian Viktor Postol, a fellow power-punching technician who has emerged as a force in his own right. Viktor Postol has knocked out Lucas Matisse. Like Crawford, Postol's record stands at 28 and 0. Like Crawford, he possesses a 140-pound title. And like Crawford, he's embraced great risk in search of great reward. <laughs> The 
MGM Grand in Las Vegas plays host to a unification bout that will answer a simple question. Who's the best? Terrence Crawford versus Victor Postol for 140-pound world supremacy is next. And now we bring you back live in the arena. And one final comment from each of our two experts to get us ready for the fight, Roy Jones, starting with you. Tremendous style contrast in the fight. Terrence Crawford, boxer puncher with the recent emphasis on puncher. Victor Postol, boxer puncher still with the emphasis on boxer. Who has the style advantage? Right now, I think Terrence Crawford has the style advantage. Reason being, Jim, is because to me, both of these guys start a little bit slow. But Terrence is a sharper puncher, a sharp shooter, somewhat to say. Therefore, he's going to have all the advantages early because Victor has been hurt early in fights. Terrence is super sharp early in fights. So I give the edge early to Terrence Crawford. All right, thank you, Roy. Max, we know in a simple sense what's at stake. The winner is the best fighter in the 140-pound weight class. Beyond that, what else is at stake? Well, as you mentioned, that and a spot in the top 10 pound for pound. Certainly, Terrence Crawford is already there. He will solidify that spot, maybe move into the top five. Victor Postal, in a way, would certainly appear on pound for pound list. But really, the big stakes here are a potential shot at Manny Pacquiao. The winner of this fight, particularly if it's Crawford, makes a lot of sense. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for Crawford against Postal at 140 pounds. And you see the age advantage of four years for Crawford. Postal spent time in the Ukrainian army, was also a mall security guard for a while before he really got his professional boxing career going. There's a three-inch height advantage for the Ukrainian fighter, a half-inch arm length advantage from the armpit to the end of the fist for the American fighter. They weighed in within a half pound of the 140-pound limit, and tonight Crawford, up to 157, apparently will enter the ring with a five-pound functional weight advantage against Victor Postol. Crawford trained by two relatively little-known training partners in Omaha, Nebraska, who clearly done a fantastic job with him. And Postol trained by the most decorated and renowned trainer in the sport of boxing anywhere in the world. Right now, Freddie Roach. Pretty decent-sized crowd here in Las Vegas. Pay-per-view audience watching at home. And here comes Postol. He didn't have the kind of amateur career that made him a preordained star like Lomachenko. Coming into the sport of boxing, he's built himself pretty much from nowhere to where he is right now. And given his background, Max, I've been impressed with how calm and confident he has seen this week. Well, he has the athletic quality, long, wiry, athletic fighter. He has the work ethic in the gym to get the best out of himself. And as you mentioned, he has a guy who's considered most years the best trainer in the world since he usually wins the trainer of the year in Freddie Roach in his corner, who's been able to bring out the best in post all, make him the best version of himself. It was very striking, Roy, how easily Matisse went away. Post all seemed to break his will. Without great power, how do you do that? Well, he did it with his skills and his finesse because, as you know, he has a celebrated amateur career, which tells you these guys in the Ukraine are superior amateur boxers. Not just regular, but superior amateur fighters. So Victor Postol in the ring now with Freddie Roach and physical trainer Gavin McMillan right behind him. Freddie's assistant, Marvin Simodio, the smaller, dark-haired man there, does a lot of the work with Postol in the gym. Here comes Terrence Crawford. He was not a giant amateur star, Roy Jones. Didn't make the Olympic team, but now is in position to become the number one American fighter. Tremendous incentive for him. Yes, a tremendous incentive because, because he wasn't a, a, a amateur, such a big amateur star. It gives him more hunger to prove his point now that he's here at this big stage. So all the guys that were ahead of him as an amateur, he gets to now say, that was fake, this is real. Close losses as an amateur to Danny Garcia and Mikey Garcia. If he wins tonight, he'll be ahead of both of them in the pro well, ranks. He had no problem with Mikey Garcia in the amateurs. He took care of him relatively easily. I think that Crawford, the reason he's favored here tonight more than anything else, Freddie Roach points out that Postal made his last two opponents quit. Could you imagine Terrence Crawford quitting in a prize fight? And that's, I think, what the betting public sees. 
nickname is Bud. And there's an eerie resemblance between the bond between Floyd Mayweather and his hometown of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and the bond between Crawford and his hometown of Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska loves Bud Crawford. He said he doesn't like to talk about the negative things because he's now moving into a positive light and he wants all of that positive light to stay positive. Not only do they show up 10,000, 11,000 plus in Omaha, they travel to New York. We saw him represent at Madison Square Garden. They're here tonight in Las Vegas. So with an arena full of Cornhuskers ready to root for their man, Terrence Crawford enters the ring for the biggest fight of his professional career. And now with Crawford and Postal both in the ring, Next up will be Michael Buffer with the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, Hall of Fame boxing promoter Mr. Bob Arum and Top Rank Incorporated in association with Elite Boxing Promotions proudly presents the main event of the evening. Undefeated champion versus undefeated champion 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO, WBC, Light Welderweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Cerveza Tecate, Born Bold. The new motion picture, Hands of Stone, the true story of Roberto Duran, starring Edgar Ramirez, Robert De Niro, and Usher Raymond in theaters everywhere August 26th. This contest sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Anthony A. Monell III, Executive Director Bob Bennett, and the World Boxing Organization, WBO President Francisco Paco Barcarcel, and Supervisor Luis Perez, and the World Boxing Council, WBC President Mauricio Sullivan, Supervisor Chuck Williams. The three judges scoring this bout, from Italy, Guido Cavallari, from Nevada, USA, Dave Moretti, and from Connecticut, USA, Don Trella. And the referee in charge of the action at the bell, world championship veteran, Tony Weeks. And now, the officials are in place, and they are ready. The fighters are in the ring, and they are ready. So for the thousands in attendance, and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner with trainer Freddie Roach and wearing blue with red. Official weight, 139, one half pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 28 fights, 28 victories, including 12 wins by knockout, Damigas Vedal, Eskiev, Ukraine, the reigning and defending undefeated WBC super lightweight champion of the world, Victor the Iceman Postal. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner with his trainer, Esau Dieguez. He officially weighed in at 140 pounds. And he, like his opponent, has a perfect professional record, consisting of 28 fights, 28 victories, including 20 wins by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from Omaha, Nebraska, USA, the reigning, defending, undefeated WBO, light welterweight, champion of the world, Terrence Bud hey. Okay, all right, gentlemen, you both received your instructions in the dressing room. Okay, right here is okay. 
Anything below that's low. Right here is okay. Anything below that's low. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Let's go. This should be high-speed chess tonight. We'll see if we also get fireworks or something else. But if you're watching this right now, you're not only a boxing junkie, but you are a real boxing fan with discriminating taste. The number one, two, and number two fighters in the division are squaring off for supremacy. A real boxing fan can't miss this. Round one begins. Crawford wearing magnificent looking gold gloves. Let's see if his performance can be as golden as the gloves. And for the first time in a fight, Jim, for a long time, the referee didn't even say touch gloves. He wanted them to come out fighting, forget the glove touching. Will Terrence Crawford try to find out in round one exactly how willing Postal is to fight with him? Yes, he will. He won't try to do that, Jim. He'll try to find out can Postal take his shocking punch that hurt him when he fought Matisse, hurt him when he fought the other guy. Uh, Oh, El Celtic ID. ID, yeah. Yes, he was so. rocked by left hands in the first round of both those fights. And we see that Eastern European, especially Russian and Ukrainian style, where the long fighter, the, the, the long reach and the height, keeps that jab out in front, which acts as a kind of deflection for his opponent's punches, but also brings that jabbing hand closer to his opponent's head, and that has bothered the American style in the past. And Crawford waited about 20 seconds to switch from conventional to the southpaw stance. Yeah, I don't like him in the southpaw stance so much. I like him as a right-hander better until he finds out what kind of straight right hand Postal has. But is he switching to the southpaw stance immediately to try to take away Postal's jab? I don't think so, Jim. I think he's doing it just to show Postal that you're no different than anybody else. I'll switch southpaw on you whenever I feel like it. Postal, meantime, is applying pressure right from the opening bell and uh, fainting, watching for Crawford's reactions to those feints. Crawford having a hard time finding the distance against this long, lean, and technically sound opponent. With that's regard to the switching southpaw, Freddie Roach perhaps engaging in psychological gamesmanship, as is so often the case, said earlier this week, yeah, we hope he switches southpaw. We want him to switch southpaw, because that will set up Victor's straight right hand. And that's what I'm thinking, Jim, so we'll see what happens. The other thing we must say, though, is we've never seen a taller fighter chase, chase Terrence Crawford around for the first uh, part of the fight. So this is different for Terrence. And I'm not sure I've ever seen Terrence as reluctant to throw punches as has been the case for the first two minutes of this fight. Not to get carried away, but early in Sugar Ray Leonard and Tommy Hearns' first fight, Tommy Hearns, the long, lean fighter with the big right hand and the good jab, was the aggressor. And Ray had to hurt him to the body to get him to stop being the aggressor. Postal decided to step in and be the aggressor here moments ago. Stop, 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 stop. Quick little right hand inside landed for Crawford. Tony Weeks is the referee. Bad shot stop, by, stop, by stop. Postal. That's the shot I don't want him to land on Crawford because when ah. Southpaw, Crawford gives that shot up not knowing it. It's a good round for Postal, I thought. They landed the same number action. of punches, six. But Postal looked comfortable with what was going on in there. Marcus. You're doing good. Just when you counter, you come with two or three punches. You see how that works? All right. I want you to do that. Keep back a little bit. Just counter with two or three punches. Huh? Right. Count when you counter, two or three punches. Okay. Because he's not countering back. Okay. Just keep it here. Throw that left hand, throw that left hand down to the gut. Yeah. All right, throw it up, throw it. It's there, okay? It's got, it's got to be like a foo foo. Okay? Make sure you bring that jab back. Let's go, babe. Comments in the corner from both of Crawford's trainers, Esau Diegas and Brian McIntyre. <laughs> Round two begins. Jabbing to the body is Postal. Crawford fires back a jab to the body himself. Postal just looks so much bigger in there. And Terrence is actually five pounds heavier. Yep. But Jim, to what you said earlier, you asked did uh, Crawford turn southpaw to take Postal's jab away. 
why would you turn to take the jab away when the right hand is the best weapon? That's the shot you should really take away. You feel me? I understand that, but he may be of the thought process that Postal needs the jab to set up the right hand. That it's really the rhythm on the jab that gets him going in position and to he, throw the right. He, and it could be, but as a southpaw, it's much easier, like Postal landed that right hook at the end of the round, for Postal to land the right hand. And that, I think, is Postal's best punch. Not a lot of action so far, but a lot of tension. Body shot for Postal with the right hand. Crawford again in the southpaw stance and has been in the southpaw stance all of this round. We may not see him turn back conventional at any time in the fight. And usually, usually when he does that, he sees something that we don't really see, but he stays there because he's comfortable and that's what he likes. A good body shot. And see post all being a, being a highly decorated amateur fighter knows the correct punches to throw at a southpaw from the orthodox position. So far, Postal has been first. Not a lot has happened, but he's been first, and he's been the guy dictating things. Um, that's not uncommon in a Crawford fight in the early rounds. Yeah, but like uh, the kid Lundy said, it's not good for Crawford in a fight with Postal because Postal is longer. He's the inexperienced pro guy. Well, now he has experience, but not the quite the experience that Crawford has. He hasn't seen the opposition that Crawford has seen. So he's the inexperienced pro fighter, but you don't want to give him confidence in a fight like this. Crawford sneaking at a body shot with the left hand. Postal stalking and looking upstairs. Crawford trying to counter Postal's jab. Postal reluctant to throw it right now. Another good body shot by Crawford yeah. with the left hand, and those have been his best punches in the fight. The body shots that he's landed with the left. Part, one of the ways Crawford several times has turned fights around after a slow start is by waiting for the right counter, waiting for the right counter, and hurting his opponent with it. And we've seen Postal countered early in fights with big shots that have hurt him. There's the left hand. That lands for Crawford. Stepping forward and getting a little bit more aggressive as the crowd warms up. And this is what Crawford needs. He needs a fight to break out. Tim Bradley, huge friends with Terrence Crawford, cheering his buddy on. <coughs> it was Bradley who talked the promoter top rank into making Crawford available to fight greatest Prescott on the undercard of a pay-per-view year can, here in Vegas a that, few yeah. years ago, right. and that was the if fight that really launched Crawford twice. as an A right. fighter. Be faster off the, when y'all when y'all tie up. Be faster with the combinations. Try to come out. Be much aware. Okay, how you feel? Good. 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 Deep breath. Deep breath. Here you see Postal coming in with the jab. He's first, like Max said, where he kind of changed the jab with a right uppercut, followed by a left hook. But then Crawford hit him with an overhand left that knocked him off balance. Good exchange by both fighters. Copy box numbers so far in the fight. Crawford is 14 of 60. Postal 12 of 38. So Postal not as active as Crawford, but more accurate so far. We just and we saw the glimpse at the end of that round of Crawford's countering ability. We've seen Postal hit Crawford pretty good. We haven't seen Crawford put a really good shot on Postal's chin yet. Crawford is out of the southpaw stance, but he's moving in the direction that an orthodox fighter would move, clockwise, oftentimes. Crawford seems to want to draw Postal to him and counter when Postal throws. Postal isn't taking the bait. He's staying back and not throwing. scenarios that were discussed as to what could happen in the fight the one scenario I didn't see was war of nerves and that's what it's been so far good right hand on the inside by Postal moments ago he's getting confident but he better not get too confident
good hook by Crawford. One punch at a time. So far for both fighters, neither guy has landed a competent com combination, and we're almost three rounds in. And that's how good, well, a good fight between two classical boxers, or two classic boxers, usually unveils. Right hand to the body by Postal. Crawford a little short with the jab. Now Postol tries the jab. Gets it there, but not much impact. Right hand by Postol. Crawford going in for a body shot and got caught upstairs. Good left hand, hand by Crawford. It's counterpunch night. Both guys most effective when they can land the counter shot. Well, this is the high-speed chess I was referring to. Guys fainting, both fighters looking for openings off the feints. Rabbit punch by Crawford. You can see the graphic that shows you both fighters have landed six punches in the round. That's a low-activity round. Because like Max said, it's a real chess, chess match right now. That's the closest thing to a trade we've had. And Postol gets the better of it both times. Lands a couple of right hands and lands a jab. And another right hand to the chest. So Postol is now making his length a factor in the fight. Yes, he is. Very good. What's your favorite show? Thank you. If you throw a if you throw a lazy jab out there, he's gonna counter it. All our jabs have to be fast and sharp. Okay? Don't be lazy with that jab. Alright? Don't lay it out there because he'll counter with his hook over the top. Good fast jab, good fight with good, good, good right hand behind you, okay? Very nice combination. Very nice. Box numbers in round three. Yeah. Crawford was seven of 31. Postal was 13 of 28, landing almost 50% of his punches in the round as he stayed back, waited to counter, took advantage of his opportunities, and did it well. Howard Letterman, how do you have it through three? <laughs> I'll catch him. 29, 28, two rounds to one. Victor Postal. Yeah, this is a hard fight, Jim. I swear to God. Postal keeps his arms really far away from his body, bounces up and down a lot. Terrence Crawford, all he's doing is circling to the left. I mean, he's been doing this for three rounds already. He bounces a lot, circles to the left. Every so often, he sets his feet and lands a good shot. I thought that Postal won rounds one and three. Three was a little bit more clearer than one. And I thought Terrence Crawford got in enough good shots to win round two. But it's got to be close so far. Two to one, Victor Postal. Heard Freddie in the corner worried about that counter right hook from the southpaw position from Crawford over a lazy jab from Postal. Sometimes with a, a tall guy with a big jab, if he occasionally gets lazy with it and brings it down low, will get countered over the top that way. And Crawford does have the kind of power that can change the fight around. Yes, he does. If he lands a clean shot, he can. Like that. Hard left hand by Crawford. Postal tasted it, wants to answer back immediately. Another left hand shot for Crawford. And another. Momentarily knocked Postal off balance. So a rally by Crawford with the left hand. And now the attention shifts just a little bit. Body shot by Crawford. Getting aggressive again with a combination upstairs. Here's Crawford trying to take over in round number four. And that's what he should do. Uh, the ref hadn't yet said break. And Postal is trying to tie him up. And Crawford kept those hands moving. And not just pity pat shots. Hard shots. Suddenly in round four, Terrence Crawford a great deal more active. Postal tries to stop the momentum with a body shot with the right hand. What do we say? First three rounds, Crawford figures you out. And then he takes over. Terrence Crawford trying to achieve liftoff here in round number four. After a scratch and sniff first three rounds for both fighters, Postal seemed to have a little bit of an advantage. Professional sports at this level, all professional sports, involves in adjustments. Who can make adjustments and then readjust? Crawford was moving away from Postal's right hand as Postal found him but was reaching to land the punch. 
Crawford's CPU, his boxing CPU, is very powerful, able to analyze and make adjustments. Now can Postal adjust to Crawford's adjustments? Because of how Postal jumps in, though, both guys have to oh. really be careful of ahead, but. Quick right hand by Crawford, found Postal's chin. Seesaw fight. Postal seeming to win the odd rounds. Crawford seeming to win the even ones. to the left because he, he's steadily following you take that step to the left and then try to counter or, or take it and just see what he's gonna do and then next time you get around to it then you'll be able to go okay all right but you better be a little bit closer okay work your way in with the jab okay work your way in with the jab go there over hand right for me okay he's moving, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving well, that way all the time hands of stone and there he is mr manos de piedra himself Panama's greatest fighter, Roberto Duran. Beautiful smile from Roberto. Wasn't always that friendly in the ring. Oh, oh drop, that's a knockdown. Knocked down. Knocked down by Crawford. Six, seven, eight. Come in, come in. You win a punch. First time in his career that Victor Postol has been knocked out. So 28 fights without a knockdown to this point. Terrence Crawford dumps him on the seat of his pants in the opening seconds of round number stop, five. Stop, stop. Explosiveness is a Crawford trademark. He figures you out, figures out how to get to your chin, then bang, there he goes. With you. Crawford's mentality is to body slam a guy at that moment. I think the high stakes and the fact that he feels this fight is going his way allowed him to kind of calm down and just spin post all around instead of trying to hurt him there. A little whirly gig to entertain the crowd. So Postal has now suffered through two embarrassments here in round number five. One, getting knocked down. Two, getting picked up. Oh. That may have helped Postal just then. Yep, it did, because he would have got knocked out had that not happened. Two knockdowns in the round for Terrence Crawford. Is it a three knockdown rule fight? No. No three knockdown in effect. Postal, when he recovers from these knockdowns, doesn't appear to be very hurt. But it's Crawford's ability to again land that big punch that has produced them. Not a cumulative effect. The effect of being able to set up huge clean shots upstairs. Postal jumps in too close to evade the attack from Crawford. And he can't afford to trade with Crawford because his chin is not as strong as Crawford's chin is. And his punch is not as strong as Crawford's punch is. But that difference has shown up in bold relief here in round number five. Terrence Crawford has the power, and Victor Postol doesn't have as good a chin. Well, Crawford also has an ability to adjust, as I mentioned, that doesn't just have to do with his preparation for a given fight or a given game plan. Postol did a good job of ducking a left hook that would have knocked him in the next week. It has to do with a, a, an exceedingly sharp boxing mind. The side movement has helped to set up big shots for Terrence Crawford here in round number five. He's knocked Victor Postal to the but twice. And momentarily takes over the fight. As his mother exults at ringside. Number one fan for Terrence Crawford is his mom. You can't miss her. He ain't got no legs no more. Okay? You see, he don't got no bounce in the step after that knockdown. Okay, so you can actually you can actually start creeping this motherfucker backwards just a little, a little bit. 
See, he don't want that interaction, okay? Here you see, at the start of the round, Terrence Crawford comes out and a right hook right on top of the head right away, knocks Post all down. An easy right hook, wasn't even a devastating punch. Didn't even hit him that hard. But it's where it landed at. Watch where it lands at, Jim. It lands right on the top part of his head. Bing, right there, kind of in the back of the head, high on the top of the back of the head, and down it went. And the second one, down later with, this a harder punch. Went with a real left hand. He countered the right hand. Caught, I mean, post our stepped in too far. Bing gets caught with the counter left, and there he goes again on a delayed reaction. Exactly right. You mentioned, you asked earlier, Jim, about the American style. I think what typifies the American style at the top of the pound for pound ranks is the boxing brain. You think about Floyd Mayweather, Andre Ward, and Terrence Crawford. His ability to outthink and think faster than his opponent, I think, is probably the hallmark of the American style. And he's constantly moving lateral, which is not allowing Postal to throw no more than one punch at a time before he's getting counted. I think it's the lateral movement that's really beginning to confuse Postal. Helped to set him up for the shots that he took in the last round. Postal wants to come straight forward, and there he gets in a pretty good right hand. And European styles have been accused of being kind of color by numbers and technical, but not enough bend in them. Um, of course, all styles around the world are becoming more homogenous, but here you see Crawford bending and adjusting, and, and Postal has been unable to do it. And you can't color by numbers if the target is not still right there in front of you. That's the biggest problem that Postal is having right now. Styles becoming more homogenous around the world, Max. Wouldn't you say that both Gennady Golovkin and Sergey Kovalev tend to fight more in an American style? In Golovkin's case, a Mexican style, as he'll tell you. Of course. But yes, exactly there's, right. There's cultural exchange going on in boxing absolutely with trainers and fighters all over the world good In body shot by Crawford. including with Postal and Freddie Roach Crawford is just such a magnificent fighter that he's taking control of the fight you heard Terrence Crawford's trainers telling him between rounds Postal's legs are going he doesn't have the bounce anymore Postal still bouncing here in round six but certainly he had difficulty with his balance in the pit what Terrence wants to do is try to make it a situation to where Postal jumps in too big. Uh, once he jumps in too big, he's too close to Crawford to evade the counterpunch. And that's what has cost him the knockdowns so far in this fight. Well, the two points that he lost on knockdowns in round five, Postal now would appear to have an uphill fight on the scorecards. Stop, stop, stop. He's just not getting to throw as many punches as he's been accustomed to. Yeah, because Terrence is not sitting right there in front of him. He's moving laterally like that, and he doesn't allow him to throw but one punch before he has to change his positioning. And that does not allow him to punch again. Six comes to a close. Postal pauses, drops his hands, and just looks at Crawford for the last several seconds as if to say, I can't find you. Even. Thank you. We're following him too much. We need to cut the ring off more. You have to set traps, man. We catch him in the corner. When you have him in the corner, you can't get away. All right, go with the one, two, right, one, two, one, right down the middle. All right, but you can't follow him. You gotta cut the ring off. Stay with him. Stay with him. In the first six rounds of this fight. Victor Postol has thrown 120 punches and landed 42, meaning that he's averaging 7 out of 20. In the previous five fights, he was at 20 landed punches through 71 thrown in all of those fights as an aggregate. So he's been accustomed to throwing 70 punches per round. He's throwing about 20 per round here. That's a giant difference. That means no rhythm. That means he's 
not following up on anything. It means he hasn't found opportunities to counter. It means that Terrence Crawford has thoroughly confused him with the movement style. Completely confused him with the lateral movement because he's not a steel target, not sitting right there in front of him, not allowing him to throw more than one punch at a time. Harold, how do you have it halfway through? <laughs> okay, Jim. Four rounds to two, 58-54, Terrence Crawford. I got to tell you, Jim, Freddie Roach is absolutely right in the corner. He told the guy, stop following him and cut the ring off. I mean, this guy don't have a clue how to cut the ring off. He follows him around all the time, and when Terrence Crawford sees the opening, steps forward, and he whacks the guy. And, and that's how he knocked him down twice. He gets a 10-7 round in, in round five. That gives you know, this huge four-point lead on the scorecards. But as long as Terrence Crawford keeps moving, Postal is going to keep chasing him because he don't know how to cut the ring off. Four to two, Terrence Crawford. And when you see a guy who's 29 fights into his professional career and does not know how to effectively cut off the ring, it means he's not an attacking fighter. Even most attacking fighters don't know how to effectively cut off the ring, slide to the side, and head the guy off at the pass. But part of that has to do with Crawford's quick feet, the fact that he can switch up orthodox southpaw, the fact that while you're trying to cut off the ring, he's getting the angle on you again to land his own punches. Not so easy to cut off the ring on Crawford. And the fact that you won't throw body shots, which would allow you to keep him busy like he's doing you, why you're trying to set him up and get him to be still and throw a head shot. You're strictly head hunting. You're never going to slow him down. And Close that's all landed a couple of shots there. Lancing blows. Crawford with a hard body shot right on the belt. And that's what, what, what our post star won't do. And that's what he does not like to feel coming at him. The other thing is when a guy's been knocked down a couple times, fine, cut off the ring. Now you got him where you want him. Or does he have you where, where he you wants want you? you? Exactly. Of course, if you cut off the ring properly, you should have the proper punching angle on your opponent but hard to kind of make your body do that when all you know is when you come in you get dropped Crawford has remained in the southpaw stance since the first 20 seconds of the fight I wonder if there's a point at which we're going to stop calling him a conventional fighter and say, hey, Terrence Crawford's a southpaw. This is how he stands in the ring. I think he's whatever he wants to be. Look at that. He does both of them equally to me. Straight left hand. Beautiful feints. Well, he does them equally well, but it's clear that he prefers to be in the southpaw stand. Spends more time there. Stay off the rope, okay? That's important. Hey, try to back him down a little bit. All right? Because hey, if that left hand is down, that race, that straight right, that straight right is gonna be available. He see Crawford okay. moving around, confused him, making him get too close. Once he gets too close, he faints like he's going backwards, and bing, there's a straight left hand right down the pipe, followed by a right jab, and on out of the corner he goes. Beautiful lateral boxing by Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford was favored in the Las Vegas sports books by as much as six to one. Some thought those odds were too long. Right now, he's making him look good as he's been dominant for the past few rounds in the fight. Knocked Victor Postol down twice in the fifth round and now has a substantial lead, as you see on Harold Letterman's unofficial scorecard. Still a lot of time in the fight, but I um, wonder if Manny Pacquiao is watching. Almost knocked him down with that same right hook at the beginning of the round again. Yes. Victor Postal was the one who had a lot of rounds sparring against Manny Pacquiao. Another reason why Freddie Roach was saying, well, we don't care if Crawford turns southpaw. After all, Victor sparred against the best southpaw in the world several times. Early in fights, Crawford looks just vulnerable enough and gets hit enough that you'd think that real top-notch world-class fighters think, yeah, I, I, want, I could fight this guy. But you watch the whole fight, boy. It's a different story by the end. Total different story by the end. 
Postal hasn't faced a southpaw in the ring since 2013 in an official fight. But the sparring sessions with Pac Down took up a lot of time. Crawford is landing his power shots more or less at will now. He has so discombobulated Postal with the foot movement and the herky jerky timing and the southpaw stance and the whole thing that he's just basically doing whatever he wants to do now, such as that. Crawford's able to get in and out so quickly that he'll land a shot or two and step away, and Postal hasn't even managed to gear up a possible counterpunch. Over and over. Postal is waiting to see that steel target, Jim, and he's never going to get it from Terrence Crawford, so it does him no good to keep looking for that one straight right-hand knockout. Stop, 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 stop. See that one punch knockout is all he's looking for. Yeah, it's he's easy got easy for Crawford to evade that. He's got that right hand cocked. That's so all he doesn't want to set it up. That's all he's looking for. And he doesn't have a left hook, so he's a one-handed fighter now. And you can see that coming. Crawford's so much quicker. Ha! Able to get in and get out, get off, do what he wants, move away. <laughs> and he's turning it into a wrap. You land that one right hand, you, you have it in the corner, it, it works very well for you. All right, Papa, we'll we, we need to do that more. On the chest here, the killer. All right. Now, remember, don't throw that lazy jab. Quick, quick jab. Jab, what's the name? Quick press. You can die when you need one. We'll probably check it out, Papa. Let's be a little more aggressive with that quick jab, all right? Jab up. But it has to be okay, big jab. Quick and hard. Quick and hard. Quick and hard. That's what Terrence Crawford's been able to do. <laughs> Quick and hard is exactly what Victor Postal has not been able to do. Go to round nine of a schedule 12. It was very interesting early when there wasn't a lot of activity and they were sizing each other up and it was something of a war of nerves and Postal, at least on Harold Letterman's unofficial scorecard, won two of the first three rounds. It got less interesting in round five when Crawford walked out of his corner and managed to land a right hook on the top of Postal's head and knocked him down. Then he knocked him down later on in the fifth round after a scintillating left hand. And since that time, Crawford has done what he wanted to do. I think the magic number for Crawford is three. He <laughs> needs three rounds to figure you out. And then in the fourth round, boys, watch out. All hell breaks loose. Well, that was the case against Yuri Orcas Gambo. It was the case against Thomas DeLorme. It was the case against Hank Lundy. If it, you, you get lulled into thinking you're actually watching a competitive fight, and then you realize, no, he was just waiting, like, programming, studying, and, and writing his program, and he was going to carry it out come round four. Good body shot by Crawford one of the reasons when you ask Crawford about how he's going to fight someone, he says, oh, you'd never know. You have to wait until you get in there with him. When first we saw him a few years ago against Bradis Prescott, he was a conventional fighter who would occasionally switch to the southpaw stance. Tonight, he switched southpaw 20 seconds into the fight and has stayed there. Oh, good shot. Good shot, man. He's looking for another southpaw knockout. The post is hurting. And Crawford is a finisher. Post is hurt, and Crawford likes to hurt. The problem for post too, too, Max, is that post doesn't have a plan B. It's either knock him out with the right hand or else. <laughs> 
and your trainer can only do so much. Freddie Roach can devise a game plan, but invariably, when the other guy does something to interrupt it, to disrupt it, what can what else can you go to? And that's Crawford's forte. And you mentioned fishing earlier, Roy. It's like Crawford is luring him in little by little by little and setting him up for that big counter to exactly. finish the fight. As soon as he gets close enough, Crawford bangs him. I comp your box count. Victor Postal just landed a punch about 10 seconds ago, and that was the first punch he had landed in this round. By comp your box count in that round, Victor Postal was one of 10. You talk about being reduced to nothing within the fight. That's what's happening to Postal at the hands of Terrence Crawford. We we way we way ahead. We way ahead. We way ahead. Hey, keep doing what you're doing. All right, keep popping that jab in his face. All right, you see that motherfucker ain't got nothing but that right hand left. That's all he got. Hey, hey. Он бегает, но надо его связать. Ещё надо будет больше туда добавлять. Make your fame before you go. Jogger, big jump and such a deep. Fame once before you go, he he he'll draw his, his lead out, okay? Casey yeah. Cobb uses feints. Faint jumps in with the jab, like a Pacquiao does, and follows with the straight left hand behind it. Once he realizes the, the jab lands and pushes post all back, clean left hand right on the chin. Two rounds to go. Victor Postal hoping that he can suddenly solve a puzzle which has been absolutely impenetrable for him through the first nine rounds, and I should say three rounds to go, excuse me, as we get to the tenth of a scheduled twelve. Harold, how do you have it through nine? <laughs> okay, so I got it seven to two, eighty-eight, eighty-one, Terrence Crawford. You, you know, Jim, I'll tell you the truth. I think if Terrence Crawford wanted to, he could step in and knock this guy out. I mean, I, I honestly believe that he could take him out any time he wants to. The problem is he's getting complacent, you know? He, he sees he's winning every round by circling, by moving, by getting in a shot when he can get in a shot. You see, like this. I, I mean, if he wants to step forward, he could take this guy out. Anyway, Terrence Crawford big, seven rounds to two, 88-81. I don't know if I agree with that. I think that Crawford is in a very good position to gauge how much his opponent has left. I think Postal is showing him enough that Crawford doesn't feel like he can just run him over. And, um... I don't know if we're in a position to suggest that he's being complacent or that he's being smart. Yeah, I would guess that he's being smart. Very smart. I think there's stop, a greater stop. chance that the knockout would come if Postal decided to go forward and sell out and try to take risks to try to achieve the knockout himself. Right. If that were to happen, Crawford would get the chance to put him away. Precisely. Okay. But if Postal is going to continue to dance at range and throw 10 punches per round as he did in the last round, then we're probably going the distance because why should Crawford take a risk? No reason at all. Well, I'd also trust the judgment of one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world who's already dropped the guy twice, hurt him another couple times, and has won every round since, what, the fourth? And the two trainers in his corner, who despite their obscurity and the fact that very few people know their names, haven't made a mistake yet with an unbeaten fighter en route to 29 and 0. Good hook by Crawford. Terrence Crawford is trained by two guys from Omaha who both had losing records in obscure professional careers. We once asked him in a fighter meeting, how are you confident that you can learn from two guys who had losing records? He said, listen, you got to understand this sport. They didn't have managers. They didn't have a promoter. They didn't have anything to protect them. They were thrown to the wolves. They fought against better, more experienced guys. That's why they have those records, but they learned a lot, and that's why they can teach me. And maybe they didn't have the athletic quality to succeed on the highest level, but Crawford certainly has that, too. And two hands are better than one. Interesting. <laughs> hey, don't change nothing. Let's ride this motherfucker out. Get that belt.
Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. more aggressive, okay? It doesn't seem like it's going to be aggressive. Now, we have to knock him out to win, okay? You know that. But now, here. Get a, get a little bit closer with the jab. Your jab is getting you there, okay? Double the jab up. Straight right hand right down the middle, okay? Remember, he's going. There's a brief scenic provided by our director, Jonathan Evans. An outside view of the MGM Grand Hotel. And now we're back to the ring. It was a great brief scenic. Round 11 begins. Total punches landed, Crawford 106, and he's not exactly selling out to try to land a lot of punches. First all, averaging six landed punches per round. Now after disagreeing with Harold's point about his complacency in the last round, I, I do think that if Crawford were to close the show with a knockout, it would create even more momentum for his career at the moment. Um, he's becoming an attraction. He already is an attraction in Omaha, obviously, but even on the road, he's becoming an attraction and a ratings generator and, and a guy that fight fans really want to see. And you saw right there how the knockout could take place as Postal decided to attack, went in, got close to Crawford, and Crawford nailed him with a couple of hard counter shots. Uh, Postal finally threw a good body shot just now. It's getting late. There are only five minutes to go in the fight. Postal might have wanted to try that body shot back in round two. Yes, four or five rounds were at least. Quick right hands from Crawford. Doing just as his corner suggested. Pop that straight jab. Keep him confused. Doing a terrific job out of southpaw stance against a tall southpaw. Yeah, and, and against the guy who... And against the guy who just made Lucas Matisse quit you know, beat out his will to win, uh, is undefeated, is in his prime, and looked to all the world like the second best fighter in the division, and probably is. Until proven otherwise. There we go again. Postal gets close, tries to attack. You saw Crawford landing the hard counter shots. And Postal throws, sells out to one big bomb, and then he's done. He's off balance. Not ready to punch back, not ready to really defend, and Terrence Crawford makes him pay for this. Go, go, go. Third round. I got you. Third round. So this makes you think that at the moment last year when Matisse had beaten Provodnikov and was preparing for post all, and a lot of people thought, okay, this is going to be the moment at uh, which Matisse stamps himself as the number 140-pound fighter in the world. At that moment, Crawford had had 140-pound fight against Tomas Delorme. He was probably already the best 140-pounder in the I'll world. I'll take it a step further, and we discussed it during the broadcast. When Crawford beat Greatest Prescott in his, in his coming out party, it seemed like he was probably the best 135 and maybe 140-pounder pound, in the world at that point. And now a penalty for Postal. Come on, or hitting step, behind the head. Go. Time is, go. But suspecting a guy is the best and him going out and proving it are two different things. And Crawford has done nothing but prove it since then. That's another point for the landslide deficit now that Postal takes into the final round. See, he's trying to press you with his legs. He's trying to press you with his legs so you can make a mistake. You ain't gonna make no mistake. Just stay focused, keep your hands up and shit. When he coming to you, sometimes throw a feint at him. They're freezing. Then you can catch him, okay? No, you, okay? All right. All right, pressure, 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 okay? Put your chin down, okay? Final round of a fight in which now the competitive outcome would appear to be a foregone conclusion. Unless Victor Postal can pull the most unexpected comeback knockout in quite some time. Oh, landed a couple good shots just then. Stop, stop, stop. Postal seems willing to try. He's always willing to try, Jim. 
He has a big heart. He just hasn't done enough tonight. I mean, followed the guy around trying to land one punch. Didn't develop a left hook in training. Only came to land the right hand. You're not going to land one punch on Crawford too often. He's far too brilliant for that. Post stall landing some good shots here. And Crawford not fighting like a guy who's trying to milk a lead or sit on a lead. He's fighting like a guy who wants to mix it up. Yeah, In post all credit, he suddenly decided that he doesn't want to go quietly. Yeah, yeah, uh, Crawford should sit on that lead, though, and be smart about the way he changes because Postal still can punch with that right hand. Just not Crawford's nature. But if Crawford <laughs> chooses to stand his ground and look for the big counter shot, he might get that knockout after all. Yep. Two or, minutes to go. Or, Jim, as you said, now that Postal is getting a little more Stay reckless, up, up, up. Crawford can walk him into something big. Crawford need, I mean, uh, post on needed Dundee last round. You're blowing it, champ. You're blowing it. The words of Angelo Dundee after round 12 in Las Vegas, September 14, 1981. First fight between Sugar Ray Leonard and Tommy Hearns. No, no, ain't no 13th round anymore. <laughs> Post, post all flashing a little left hook upstairs this round, Roy. Yeah, but it's too late. It should have been post flashing that long time ago. <laughs> and when post all lands something hard, boy Crawford comes right, right back. Right nice turn right here. This round is going to redeem the fight's entertainment value. One minute to go. And now Crawford chasing him. I got to tell you, it was far from an action fight, but I was entertained. We watched the brilliant performance. Crawford smiling, laughing, sticking his tongue out at post all, holding the glove high. Sup, sup. And also maybe conceding, I, I can't knock you out. He's a showman, Terrence Crawford. Might as well stick my tongue out at you. I can't knock you out, but I whipped you pretty good. Very good. And even now, with 12 seconds to go, Postal reticent to step in and try to fire away. As Crawford moves and moves, dancing from side to side, ultimately humiliating Victor Postal. A brilliant performance from a brilliant fighter. And Postal kind of pats him on the back as he walks by, as Mom celebrates at ringside. What's your final scorecard in the fight? <laughs> okay, Jim, I got a nine rounds to two, uh, ten rounds to two, Bobby. 118, 107, Terrence Crawford. I, I mean, Jim, the guy dominated the fight with the movement. Yeah, there, there were rounds where I felt that he could have uh, given us a little bit more entertainment, stepped in and try to get the guy out. But be as it may, the 12th round was a great round where Postal went after Crawford and they really mixed it up, you know? Terrence Crawford is a tremendous fighter. Good puncher, good mover, good boxer, got all the skills, all the tools, he does it all. And I'll tell you the truth, if he fights Brady Pacquiao, it's gonna be sensational. And that may well be a future date for Terrence Crawford. A pay-per-view outing against Manny Pacquiao. That will depend on what that man in the middle of the screen, Bob Arum, head of top rank promotions wants to do. Let's take a look at what happened here in the prize fight, most particularly in round five. Yeah, in round five, he came out with a quick left hook to send Postal down for the first time. That was a really a momentum changer. Kind of discouraged Postal. Then he caught with another left hand, overhand left that took Wobbled the legs him. away from him. And his gloves ended up touching the canvas right here. That's considered a knockdown. And from that point forward, Terrence Crawford seems to just take control. So now Crawford adds the belt he has just won from Postal to the belt he had before. He's got the WBC and the WBO. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the decision. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, we go to the scorecards.
Guido Caballeri and Don Trella both scored 118-107. Dave Moretti, 117-108. All to the winner by unanimous decision. And now both WBC, WBO, light welterweight, champion of the world, the fighting pride of Omaha, Nebraska, Harris. Garcia. Crawford is trying to become number one, and he's surging toward that position, Roy. Yes, he sure is surging toward that position, Jim. Uh, right now, he may be number two as far as I'm concerned because Andre. He's, constantly, uh, he's right, right behind Andre, yes. He's constantly showing that he can do anything necessary to want to fight. He shows you how he goes out, sets guys up, finds their weaknesses, and then he comes out and applies the exact correct tools to take advantage of those weaknesses. Let's take a look at the final copy box numbers in the fight. And you see overall total punches. Crawford landing nearly twice as many as Victor Postol. Throwing 164 more punches, landing in a slightly higher connect percentage. He controlled the fight all the way from the third round off. Power punches. Crawford landing 52 more. Throwing 79 more and landing at a 50% percentage. We often say if you land 50% of your power punches, you're going to win the fight. And now Max Kellerman stands by with the top man in the world at 140 pounds, Terrence Crawford. Well, this is getting redundant, Terrence. Seems like after every fight, it's congratulations on yet another brilliant performance. How did you get it done this time? Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank God for blessing me with this victory. Without him, none of this would be possible. But I just stick to what I knew, you know, boxing. You know, they say he got the best jab in the game in my division. I proved different today. You know, most fighters don't go running toward the maximum risk, minimum reward kind of fighter, which may have been postal in this case. And yet as soon as he established himself as the number two guy in the division to you, no sooner did that happen than you made this fight happen. Why? Because everybody kept saying I was running from him, I was scared of him, which that wasn't true, but we wanted to fight. We asked for the fight, you know, and I don't know why it didn't happen sooner or later, but it happened, and I'm here now. As usual, first three rounds, you fool us into thinking, wow, this is a competitive fight. And then something happens in the fourth round, and it's not a competitive fight anymore. That's been your entire career. What, what are you doing in those first three rounds? Just checking out his body language, seeing what he like to do and what he don't like to do. Okay, so you've now won this fight. You're obviously the number one fighter at 140 pounds. You're one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. You have a contingent of fans who not only pack the place in Omaha, but travel with you to New York and Las Vegas. Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao is coming back. Tell me your thoughts on Manny Pacquiao. It's whatever. I let my coaches handle that. You know, like I told y'all a million times, I'm a fighter. I fight anybody. I let everybody else do the rest. Wouldn't you want that to be your next fight? Of course, anybody, anybody. I'm looking for all the biggest and, and best fights to get me to that next level. Terrence, congratulations. It's a pleasure to watch you fight. Hey. Shout out to the USA team, the boxing team out there going for the Olympics. I wish y'all the best. Shakur, all y'all, good luck. Why don't you mess around and win a gold medal? You were just waiting to turn pro and win championships. Hey, them, they're my guys, man. They come down there, they help me out, they train with us. You know, best of luck to all them. Goos, all y'all. Thanks, Terrence. Jim? Omaha. All right, thank you very much, Max Kellerman. Back at ringside with Roy Jones. Roy, I'm not sure I buy into the notion that top rank is going to go right ahead with the possibility of putting Terrence Crawford in pay-per-view against Manny Pacquiao, but it might happen in the next Pacquiao appearance after that if they were to match up. 
How do you see the matchup between Crawford and Pacquiao? Well, it's a very fun matchup because Crawford can fight him left-handed or right-handed. We haven't seen Pacquiao in against a guy that could switch and be equally effective as a lefty as he could as a righty. So Pacquiao would have more of a puzzle to figure out than with Crawford. And we also know that Pacquiao has been taken out a few times by some really big punches. Crawford is a really big puncher. All right. Thank you very much, Roy. Max Kellerman, Terrence Crawford is on a drive to prove that he is a great American fighter. How did he add to the campaign tonight? You're reading my mind, Jim. You know, there's a difference between a front runner and a thoroughbred champion. And Terrence Crawford, there are a lot of good fighters. And when the going gets rough or they're faced with a kind of a, an obstacle early, it can kind of go bad for them. Not Terrence Crawford. That's no front runner. You don't get the feeling just that you're watching a good fighter when you're watching him fight. He's giving me the feeling, at least, that we're watching a great fighter in his prime. And it just so happens that he's in a weight neighborhood where there are a lot of other good fighters and maybe a couple great ones waiting for him. All right. We want to thank you very much for being with us on this excellent pay-per-view card. Now let's take a look ahead to the next big fight on HBO. And it's another knockdown for Ward. Ward is putting on an eye-opening performance. So quick on the trigger. Landing when he wants to, where he wants to. Andre Ward is relentless. Terrence Crawford versus Victor Postol has been brought to you by MGM Grand, live from Las Vegas. Cerveza Tecate, Born Bold, Hands of Stone. The true story of Roberto Duran, starring Edgar Ramirez, Robert De Niro, and Usher Raymond, in theaters everywhere, August 26. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. And now for the entire team here at the MGM Grand, thanks for being with us for Terrence Crawford versus Victor Postol.